and welcome back to Jack of All Arts. Today we'll be continuing my first attempt at creating a one-of-a-kind doll custom. We've airbrushed the body of the doll already and gotten her all prepped so we can give her a new face and new hair. This is Mayhem, the original character we're turning into a doll. Since we're going to be focusing on the head, the main things I want to make sure I have down in this trial are her bright blue eyes, small purple eyebrows, and of course the big pigtails. Because I'm so indecisive though, I'm going to make a change to her hair. The corkscrew pigtails were only a recent development, but I want to go back to a previous iteration of Mayhem. This was one of my earlier concepts for Mayhem, and you can see not a whole lot has changed, but I think I prefer the fluffy pigtails with bangs over the new corkscrew design. So here's her new hair, but we'll get to that. First things first is the face. Because I'm so new to this, it took me so many hours to do the face and the wig making that I ended up with more video footage than I really know what to do with. I tried fitting both the wig making and the face up onto one video, but it ended up being over 30 minutes long. I don't want you guys to miss out on any of the struggles or the how-tos, so I'm breaking up the videos even more than originally planned. This video will just focus on the face up, and I'll follow up with the wig video in the next week or two. For the face up, as we call it, you'll need watercolor pencils, soft pastels, acrylic paint, brushes, and an eraser. I'll also be wearing some cotton gloves so I don't get my oily little fingers all over her face. The first thing we want to do is give her a little more color around the forehead and cheeks so the skin doesn't look so flat. I'm scraping my X-Acto knife across some of the colors I think will work as a blush so it turns into a powder. Now I'm just going to lightly dust on the powder with a paintbrush. It's like tiny makeup. The cotton gloves also help disperse the pastels, which is good because this is darker than I thought it would be, like, right away. Oh god, she kind of looks like a clown. I'm going to shove some pastels in her lips as well to try to build up the color there. Well, that's looking better than the cheeks right now. Alright, I went a little overboard and she looks like the Joker, but this is where the eraser comes in. Because of our solid layer of Mr. Super Clear, we can erase all the pastels and it won't affect the skin tone at all. I like using a kneaded eraser because you can shape it to whatever you need. I'm just going to take everything off and start over. Let's try that again, this time with a lighter pink option and a smaller brush for better control. I also got rid of the gloves so I can actually grip the brushes. <laughs> There we go, this is looking more like the subtle blush I had in mind. I'm also going to put some brown on the inside of her nostrils. It's a weird little touch I wanted to put in, I just want it to look natural. I'll put a bit of the same brown on the corners of her mouth, just trying to add some depth. Now that we've got at least some blushing and shading down, I'm going to add some purple pastels where I think her eyebrows should go. I'm just kind of guessing on placement and this is the part I erased and redid the most. Actually, I erase all of this, but we'll get there. I didn't film this part super well, but I'm using a light brown to sketch out where I think the eyes should be. It's important to use watercolor pencils instead of regular colored pencils, because apparently regular pencils will get all weird and oily with the sealant because they aren't water-based. I was also guesstimating with the eyes, but it was pretty easy to just follow the mold of the face. Slowly but surely, it's taking shape. Now I'm going back over my sketch with more pastels. This is where you could add some eyeshadow and define the lids more, but I'm keeping it all brown tones because I want her to have a no makeup look at the end. I realized I needed to turn her upside down for me to properly get to the other eye. It just wasn't working for me otherwise. When I was happy with the eye shape made from shading and penciling, I started to sketch out where I wanted her irises. When I'm confident about the placement, I go over it again with blue. I'll go over this later again with acrylic paint, but it's nice to have like a stencil for later. This time when trying for eyebrows, I've marked where they should probably start, curve, and end and tried to get them as even as possible, then filled that in. I'm adding a natural lip color with pencil and then we'll let her be for a bit. I really like what I have so far and I don't want to lose any of this, so I'm going to spray her again with Mr. Super Clear and then none of this will come off. It's like getting a safe point. This step is mostly about darkening the colors, better outlining the eyes, and basically just finding the right balance of browns. I'm also going to define her lashes with a super sharp watercolor pencil. And now it's time to go over some of this with acrylic paints. Some artists always mix their acrylics with water, but I rarely do. My paintbrush is a little wet and that's as close as I get. This part actually took me a really long time, like a few hours. I'm pretty experienced with painting, but not on this very tiny scale. I'm taking the thinnest little brush I have and adding some defined hair to her brows, but then I hated it. 
<laughs> Luckily, we can just take a wet paper towel and erase any of the acrylics we don't want. I tried again with a slightly lighter shade of purple and a gentler hand, and it turned out good. I've been avoiding going over the lash line with black, but it's time. I'm just scared of messing up is all. Which I do, but that can all be undone, and I just have to keep trying for a while. I actually ended up erasing all of the work I did on her eyes several times. Eventually, I needed a break from trying to paint that lash line and laid down a layer of white. I realized I probably should have started with this anyway. Here, I'm thinning out that layer of white while it's still wet so I can see the pastel pupil underneath. I just didn't want to lose track of the placement. I should actually apologize. Somehow I lost a chunk of my videos so I couldn't show you the next big part of the process with her face. I added more shading to her lids, added her irises, and got that lash line down. I'm sorry you couldn't see it. Here's a clip of my super professional way of spraying Mr. Super Clear. You put on a mask, mostly close your glass door, spray, then shut the door and go wash your hands. After that spray of Mr. Super Clear, though, you can see this weird, almost chalky effect it had on the acrylic. I thought it would be totally fine to spray over, and honestly, the issue may have been temperature. Mr. Super Clear is best used at 65 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and I think it got too cold. Darn unreliable desert weather. But moving forward, I'm going to give her eyes and lips a gentle shine with Liquitex Gloss Varnish, and I think that'll fix some of the issues. I'm just putting the shine on the inner corner of her eyes and the pupil, mostly because it's hard to photograph or film a doll with the shine across the whole eye. Her lips are getting the full treatment, though. Looking good so far. Because the bad seal muted the color of the acrylics we did, I have to go over that lash line again. I swear, this has been the bane of my existence. I'm also going to redo her pupils and irises for the same reason, but I'm going to mix some of the gloss varnish in with the acrylics to keep that shine. Just one last little detail on her face. A cute little shine in her eyes. For this, I'm just dipping my paintbrush in some white acrylic and dabbing it on. Look how cute she is! She kind of reminds me of a Disney princess. Despite any issues, I love what we've got down here. I'm going to reattach her head to her body, and then she'll be all done for now. I really should have blow dried her neck hole a little bit before trying this to make it easier, but that did not occur to me at the time. <laughs> oh well. Well, here she is, folks, all painted and smiling. I love the way she turned out. It's not quite mayhem, and we had plenty of little issues, but I'm proud for my first attempt. Thank you for joining me for another video. Next time, we'll finish up her wig, and then our first attempt at an original doll will be complete. In the meantime, like and subscribe, and I'll see you then.